Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go video. And in this video, I'm going to cover the Santa Cruz. Is it a Oculus Go killer? I'm okay, I'm okay. I got away, I got away. Didn't, didn't hurt me that much. <laughs> well, clearly that was just a bit of fun, and obviously the uh, killer had an Oculus Rift on his head rather than the Santa Cruz. But I thought in this video it'd be good to kind of cover what is the Santa Cruz. You know, is it going to kill the Oculus Go? What's it going to do better or worse than the Oculus Rift as well? I know some people in my comments on my videos are asking about it, and interestingly enough, some people don't know about it at all. So let's go over what we know now and what I think you know the future of kind of Oculus VR is. Santa Cruz is essentially Oculus's code name for their next headset. Now it won't be called Santa Cruz when it actually gets released, it'll be called something different. These headsets were called different things when they were being developed. But it's kind of based and kind of aimed to sit between the two headsets. So whereas the Oculus Go is self-contained, all-in-one, relatively cheap, it's kind of, the games are relatively simple, low powered. It runs on sort of processors that are kind of two years old when you kind of compare it to mobile phones. Whereas the Oculus Rift, you need a PC. You know, it's got the full sort of six degrees of freedom so you can move and walk around, and look around and duck and all that sort of stuff, but it needs a PC to go with it. So it's expensive. You know, if you want kind of an all in Oculus Rift setup, you're looking at a thousand pounds, if not a lot more. Whereas Oculus Go is a hundred quid all in and you know, you can use it wherever, whenever sort of thing, all without all that wire. So what do we know about Santa Cruz? We know that Santa Cruz is going to be wireless. So it's going to be essentially a beefed up, fatter, more powerful Oculus Go with a little bit of Oculus Rift and some new tech built in as well. Now, obviously a lot of this stuff that I'm going to go over is kind of uh, rumors and we don't know full specs and details, but there is interestingly an Oculus event at the end of the month. So at the end of September, 26th of September, there's going to be an Oculus event, Oculus Connect 5. So it's their fifth event and we're expecting more details there. And the main reason we know that is one of the conferences or one of the kind of the events they're putting on to show developers how they can downscale and sort of adapt their game from the Oculus Rift onto the Santa Cruz. So unlike the Oculus Go where you're kind of stuck in three degrees of freedom, you can look around but you can't duck, jump, move forward uh, unless you actually use controls within the app. Whereas say the Oculus Rift you can, you can move around and you kind of uh, move around the room and that sort of thing, look up and down and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's the difference between that. So the Oculus Santa Cruz will include that feature. With how it'll do it exactly, we're unsure. I assume some sort of inside out tracking, maybe some, some sensors or some cameras on the actual headset itself but that should be pretty cool. Next thing, it'll have two controllers. So whereas the Oculus Rift comes with two touch controllers, the Oculus Go comes with one, the Santa Cruz will come with two, hopefully. The rumor is, is that it won't have touchpad controllers. It'll use buttons and sticks and that sort of thing, but they will be fully tracked. So the headset or whatever they have set up for it will track the controllers in full six degrees of freedom sort of thing. So you'd be able to move your arms up and down on, on whatever else. But obviously with the Oculus Go at the moment, you can only move it in more of a kind of pointer fashion. You can't sort of reach forward and grab things, that sort of thing, so that's pretty cool. It's likely that the new headset will be based on more modern mobile chips, so it still sort of be mobile processors. So there will be limitations on what it's capable of doing. But whereas the Oculus Go is running on sort of two plus year old chips, sort of um, Snapdragon 821s, the new Santa Cruz will hopefully run it on the 845 chips, which is what you get in flagship phones today. So they're pretty powerful, you know, though most of those phones these days, they play full on games, they play Fortnite and that sort of thing on the actual device itself. So there's a lot more power there. There's a lot more sort of power efficiency and a lot more tech that's kind of progressed since the process for this baby came out. When the prototype last October was being shown around, it used Fresnel lenses. So much like the Oculus Go has improved lenses over the Oculus Rift, it's gonna use these sort of lenses. Whether they are the exact same ones, we don't know, but I think the Oculus Go was a good test to see whether it worked because it didn't have sort of the uh, switch to be able to sort of separate sort of how far apart your eyes were and that sort of thing. And for the most part, that worked really well. So it'd be interesting to see whether they kind of include that slider this time, or they go with the Fresnel lenses, which kind of helped alleviate that. People think that the screen that sits within the headset is giving the same sort of screen that's used in the Samsung Odyssey and the HTC Pro headset. So it's a 1440 by 1600 display. So that should be pretty high quality, along with the new lenses, that should be pretty good and pretty sharp. And they're obviously OLED panels as well. So those dark blacks, blacker than black, much better than what you actually get on the Oculus Go as well. And hopefully a little bit more power efficient because obviously with OLED panels, they only light up the pixels that you're actually using. So if it's black, it's off. 
which you don't get with an LED panel, which is everything is lit at the same time. The Oculus Go has speakers in the side and they actually sit within the strap itself. So with this hard plastic bit strap that you can move, the sound actually pumps down and comes out right by your ears there sort of thing. So if you can see that, that's where the sound comes out. So it pumps down the plastic straight into your ears. So it's really good, it really, really works really well. So I believe that's how the sound's gonna work on Santa Cruz as well. You imagine the headset strap on the Santa Cruz would be a lot different. So maybe rather than sort of this fabric elastic type strap that you get on the go, you might get something a bit more similar to the Rift, which has kind of got this harder, sort of more rigid sort of headset. It will make it slightly less portable by that, but they may come up with some smart way to be able to give you kind of that more sort of secure, uh, harder sort of more comfortable headset strap that you, know, that you can still fold down if you're good to see. Now, how much is it gonna cost? Well, we all know the Oculus Go is 200 pound or $200. The Oculus Rift is about 400 pounds or $400 depending on what sales gone on at the time. But also you need a PC to go with this, as I said before. So you're looking at a thousand pound all in to get this running. Whereas this is all built in, 200 quid all in. And that's what the uh, Santa Cruz is gonna be. So it's gonna be an all in one headset with its own battery, its own screens, its own everything. You don't need a PC to go with it. So how much is that gonna cost? Well, I would imagine at the very least, it's gonna be double the price of the Oculus Go, at the very least. If not, I wouldn't be surprised if it's six, maybe 700 pound. Something similar to the HTC Focus, which is kind of a wireless inside and out headset. Now it's not as powerful as what the Santa Cruz is gonna be, but uh, it's kind of an e interesting comparison. And if you kind of, kind of compare to the headsets on sale today, beyond the Oculus Go, they don't start below 300 pound. So you're gonna be talking at serious price. So is that worth it over the Oculus Go? Now, as you know, I like my Oculus Go. I think it's a great little device. I've been using it a lot over the last few months and obviously that has been a major feature of my channel here on YouTube and kind of, you know, get my subscriber count up sort of thing. So thank you for that. So the question really is, is it gonna kill the Oculus Go? Well, I think they're two very different devices that will appeal to very different people. Whereas the Oculus Go is 200 pound. You can't argue with that price. For what you get in here, you're not connecting it to your phone, draining your battery like a Gear VR, because it's very similar to a Gear VR experience. And then unlike a Rift, you don't need a PC to go with it. You're not tethered by a wire. You can sort of just, you know, sit wherever you want, spin around, play the games to your heart's content. And also the downside to that is that it's got a battery in it. The battery lasts about two hours and that does run out a fair bit. I've had it when I've been using it for a couple of hours and kind of wanted to keep playing and it's ran out of battery. You can try plugging it in and using it at the same time. Just be careful of your wire. I do hope the Santa Cruz comes with a bigger battery. Now it's obviously going to run bigger and better games, downscaled versions of Rift, Rift games and that sort of thing. And I assume it'll also have access to the same marketplace that the Oculus Go has. So it'll be using those same games. Whether that sort of affect its battery performance um, it'd be interesting to see. Hopefully it will have a bigger battery than the Oculus Go. I can't imagine it wouldn't. Will that affect the weight of it? I imagine it will. But the headset strap, if it's a little bit more supportive, probably should help with that. And I think that six degrees of freedom is something that people keep asking for. They want, they kind of expect that with the Oculus Go at 200 quid. That's not realistic. But if you're paying four, five, six, seven hundred pound for it, yeah, you're probably gonna get that sort of thing. Also a good bonus over the Oculus Go is it's gonna have two controllers and they will be tracked. So you'll be able to move your two hands out and about, grabbing stuff, touching stuff, doing whatever stuff, and it'll keep a track of those controllers um, and you know, you'd have games that reflect that sort of thing. So it's a bit limited on the Oculus Go, just having the one controller. And as I say, it's more of a pointer than anything else, but it works well. For 200 quid, that's perfect. But as I say, if you're paying a little bit more, that full six degrees of freedom with those two controllers, I think will add so much and be so much more immersive to a lot of people. Now, I don't think we'll see the Santa Cruz until the new year. I think they'll give the Oculus Go Christmas time to get a few more sales in to sort of maybe get some Christmas purchases and that sort of thing. But then come the new year, I think we're looking sort of January, February time, they might release it. I will be grabbing one myself so I can get some hands on it and feature it on this channel. So do check back for that. Will it replace the Oculus Go? I don't think it will. For the price and what you get in the Oculus Go, this is a perfect introduction to VR. It's great for media, which is its main selling point. Sitting down, watching TV, watching films in full 3D, 360 degree video as well, using VR TV and Oculus events and all those different sort of 3D, 360 apps that are available. This device is perfect for consuming media. Absolutely brilliant. The games and apps that come on it are very good. I think they're quite good for pick up and play, short sessions, uh, and I can't really complain about them sort of thing. So I think I've got the expectations that I know and understand the limitations of this device. I appreciate what I've paid for it. So, you know, for that money, I'm absolutely happy with the Oculus Go. But I think the Santa Cruz will appeal to those kind of people that are a bit more into VR. Maybe you and I who've kind of maybe had the Go, kind of appreciated it, had a lot of use out of it and want the next step. Now, also, as I say, I've got the Oculus Rift and I find it a pain to set up. 
as in I don't have the room here in my house to have the sensor set up all the time, to have my laptop, my PC, whatever, running and kind of ready to go all the time. So I have to kind of spend 10, 15 minutes each time setting up, recalibrating the sensors before I can actually get playing for it. Now I do if I want to play any Rift games, because obviously the games and the experiences on the Rift are better than the Go. But for just pick up and play, this is so simple. I pick it up, I play it, I put it on my head, you know, job's a good and sort of thing. And as I say, I use this so much more than the Rift just because of that. So the Santa Cruz sits in between those two sort of things. So you should be getting slightly better performance like the Rift, but the full freedom to just pick it up and play at any point, which I think would be a massive selling point for the headset. Now it's going to cost a lot more. So as I say, I think it's more for kind of people who are into VR, that are interested in VR, that want to step up. So I think it's going to be smart from Oculus's point of view to have still have the Go sitting as their basic offering. You know, maybe they'll even drop the price a little bit now because it's supposedly sold quite well. Make it real introduction, get the mass adoption out there with the Oculus Go because I think it's perfect for that. Then, once people are interested, they can upgrade. They can upgrade to that Santa Cruz headset, get that six degrees of freedom, have those more in-depth, sort of more fancy looking games, better graphics, and more freedom to move around, that sort of thing. Brilliant, buy them into that. And then, once they've had that out for the next year or so, hopefully they'll bring out the uh, Rift 2. And then that'll be a PC one, hopefully wired again, but obviously still with some sort of wireless connection to your PC, that can run full on amazing graphics amazing experienced game sort of thing you know the next level more more field of view more sort of clarity more sort of immersion who knows what they're coming up with because oculus and facebook are deep deep in vr at the moment so it'd be interesting to see what they come up with i mean should you buy an oculus go now hmm. if i was a better man i would say just wait off until the 26th of september when they have the oculus connect event see what they say see what the path is see what they're going to be doing see what the santa cruz offers what its official name is and maybe when it's coming out and then take a judgment call there you know if you're obviously if you're into vr maybe it's worth holding out but if you want to first step into vr and you've only got a couple hundred quid this is a perfect option absolutely go for this now but if you're into vr maybe you've got this or maybe you've already experienced it you do want that little bit extra hold off let's at least hold off until the end of the month and sort of see what's coming so that's a little overview of what i think the santa cruz is what we know so far and that sort of thing give the video a thumbs up if you liked it if you found it useful thumbs down if you didn't i'm big enough and ugly to take it if you didn't like it but do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it that's fine and let me know your thoughts on the santa cruz what is it you want to see what are your key features? Give me the sort of top two or three things you want to see from Santa Cruz in September that will make it a must buy for you. I'm interested to see. Join me on my Discord at discord.remarcus.com and subscribe to the channel for more and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm uploading. I will be covering more Oculus Go and Santa Cruz as and when they come out. And it's an exciting time for my channel. There's some a video I'm just working on just now, which will go over sort of you know the future of my channel and what I'm doing. But there's some interesting stuff I think you guys will be interested in and that I think we'll kind of get a bit more involvement with each other sort of thing. So stay tuned for that. But that's me done. I'm out. Have a virtual high five.